Bharat Parsia. I've done my best. Bharat. I don't know how to print. There's too many languages and too many different. I uh, I spent six weeks overseas. And just when I was starting to figure out the, the language and the pronunciation a tiny bit, I came home. And now it's all useless. Now here's another name uh, in, a, in a foreign language with, that I don't know how to pronounce. And it would be so much more convenient if all of you people would just just convert to English. Think about it. Uh, <laughs> thank you for 400 rupees. I want to get into drones and I want to build a not. That was a joke, by the way. Take it easy. I want to build a non-fast cinema camera. Thinking of SB405, Speedy B405 V3 with uh, Radio Master Boxer, Express Lawyers, parts are hard to find in India. Any suggestions? And non-FPV specific drones with the latest parts is hard to find. Um, that's a tough one. Most of the time, if someone wants to build a slow cinema camera drone, I tell them that they, they should buy a DJI drone. Um, this freaking thing on the table behind me, this freaking drone. I built a Pixhawk drone. Why did I do that? Well, I never did it before, and I just thought I'd give it a try. This thing here, this is like five or six hundred dollars. Uh, it, it 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 so it's you know as or more expensive than a DJI Mavic doesn't even have a camera on it yet doesn't have optical flow doesn't have obstacle avoidance doesn't have a million things that you would get on a DJI drone for like 400 600 dollars so anytime somebody says anytime somebody says i want to build a camera drone or something my first thing I say is buy a DJI drone. Just do it. Um, it's better. It's cheaper. And then if the answer is, well, I can't do that, then you got to do the best you can to build your own. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's hard because you're going to pay more for something that works less good. And that's why DJI is number one. Um, the parts you've got, like the Speedy BF405, great. Um, I don't know if there's like, sometimes I talk to people and they say, oh yeah, in India, you can't import drone parts from China because of course the answer is go on AliExpress and buy parts. And they're like, oh no, you can't do that. And then other people are like, that's BS. You can import stuff. And I don't know what the answer is. Um, but, uh, this, that this, you know, speedy B is great. I mean, the thing is you have to, I, I can't tell you what you can find and what you can't find. The parts you've picked are good. I don't know if you can't get them. I don't know what you can get. Why don't you do what Black Jungle did? You do what Black Jungle did and uh, make an acrylic frame. No. Don't do it. It's a terrible idea. Uh, Quad City Bay Area says, Walksnail's teasing a new system. DJI will always be ahead. Thank you for five dollars. Um, yeah, DJI has a good track record of right when the competitors think that they're getting ready to eat DJI's lunch, DJI releases the next big thing and it just jumps quantum leaps. You know, it it reminds me. You remember? You remember in the Roadrunner cartoons, like Wiley e. Coyote's just about to catch the Roadrunner and the Roadrunner just goes meet me. Pew! That's what that's what DJI does when their competitors think they've got them where they want them. Um, do you have opinion on Walksnail working on a new system when the current system is not perfect? Thank you for $5, Quad City Bay Area. I mean, uh, Quad City Bay Area, that, that number one, the system, nothing will ever be perfect, right? DJI released the v, V1, it wasn't perfect. Eventually, they released the V2. It was never perfect. Eventually, they released the O3. It's still not perfect. I think Walksnail gets a lot of uh, flack for not fixing the things that people wish they would fix. But it's a little bit like the... You know, you know, like... When I was a kid, I usually got good grades. Shocker, right? <laughs> Bardwell was a nerd. <laughs> I would get good grades, and my brother didn't get good grades. I feel like I feel like uh, all these years later, he won't mind if I share that. 
And so he'd come home from school and he'd like get, you know, one B or one A and my dad would be super proud. That's not actually not true. My dad would, would be super critical of him uh, for not getting all A's. So the story falls a little bit short. But I felt like he got like credit for like exceeding his own standard. And I like, of course, you got all A's. I didn't get credit for meeting my own standard. And, and um, it's kind of like walk snail occasionally listens to what people want and gives it to them. And then people get super mad that they're not getting everything that they want. And DJI hardly ever listens to anything you want. And then like the one time they do it, everybody's like, oh, DJI, listen to us. They really care. <laughs> Think of all of the things we want from the DJI system that they never, that freaking binding bug still not fixed in the V2, you know, you got a Vista and you want OSD to work? Nope. So the current system is not perfect. Nothing's perfect. Nothing's ever perfect. You know what the number one thing people want from Walksnail? Better range and penetration. Oh my God, they're going to give it to you, they say. They're working on the single biggest issue that people complain about which is the range of penetration. <laughs> what do you want from them? Okay, that's my take on that. Black Jungle, thanks thanks for another five ray eyes. What, uh, what's the deal with, with 1.2 and 1.3 gigahertz video transmitters? Um, so uh, 1.2, 1.3 gigahertz video transmitters, uh, the advantage of them is that they have much better range and penetration due to their lower frequency. In general, lower frequencies propagate better. A good example of that is that when your neighbors are having a party, it's the bass that comes through the wall, not the treble. Lower frequencies propagate better and penetrate better. So going from five gigahertz down to one gigahertz is a significant boost in terms of range and penetration. The downside of 1.2, 1.3 gigahertz is this. Number one, it's an extremely small band Basically, there's room for one pilot in the air at a time. If I think if you're in Europe, you can get two. But basically, if you if you unless you fly by yourself with no one else, it's no good. You, and that's an advantage of five gigahertz, five point eight gigahertz, is you can get eight channels in the air theoretically at a time. It's a very wide band. So that's one downside of 1.2 gigahertz. The other downside is that almost nobody makes a 1.2 or 1.3 gigahertz video transmitter and receiver module. ReadyMade RC makes one and Maytech makes one, and that's essentially it for the whole world. So they have some advantages, but for hobbyists, it's really not, uh, the downsides outweigh the upsides.